This is a set of answers to the Lewis Structures Worksheet. Um, Gilbert Lewis is the one who actually invented this idea of how to show the valence electrons on atoms and how to put them together to be uh, molecules. So we've seen before, you know, things like, you know, a single atom. We'll look at those guys. But the question is, how can we put those together to be molecules, especially kind of complex molecules uh, like uh, hydrogen cyanide? Now, you can do it with uh, little lines or the dots, and both of those are fine. And what will happen, we're going to be using specifically dots right now. Um, but on the AP test, you know, you can use a uh, combination of, uh, high, of these, both of these guys uh, to get your point across. Now, we're just going to work our way through the various uh, problems. First off, we're going to start with some very simple ones. And so, if we're using the periodic table, we'd look up fluorine and find out that it has seven valence electrons. Oxygen has six, potassium has one, aluminum has three. So if we wanted to draw this, we would just give fluorine. And the way I do this is we put one on each side before we start doubling them up. Here's oxygen. We go one, two, three, four, five, six. That would do that. And for potassium, we just have one. And aluminum, then we have one, two, and three. So the neutral elements are very simple. Simple ions are not a big problem either. This says uh, fluorine has seven, but because of the negative charge up here, then we have to add one, so it actually has eight. And oxygen has six plus two, so it has eight. Potassium usually has one, but because of the positive charge, it loses it, so it has zero. And aluminum has three valence electrons, but because of the charge, it loses it, so it has zero. So when we draw this, we say fluorine, and we're going to give it eight. So it has a nice octet. We put brackets in a charge, and we try to remember to always put those brackets in charge. Sometimes I like to do them early so I don't forget to do those. Okay, eight on that one. Okay, potassium. Put a brackets in a charge, and we can see that it has zero valence electrons shown. We know that the next level down it has eight electrons. And the same thing for aluminum. The three plus charge, no valence electrons are shown. We know the next level down there's eight. So when you're doing these simple ions, it's very, very simple because of the idea that um, negative ions are going to end up with eight valence electrons, octets, and positive ions end up with no electrons. So very, very quick. Now let's go back here to some simple molecules. Uh, the very simplest molecule would be hydrogen. And hydrogen, you know, each hydrogen has one valence electron, so the total is two. So we would show a hydrogen with its valence electron, another hydrogen with its valence electron. So that's the molecule, hydrogen sharing those two. Each fluorine has seven, so it's going to be 14 total valence electrons. So the idea is we're going to show 14 dots. We'll put them next to each other. Well, one thing we're going to notice is that a lot of times atoms have octets. So we're going to start off just by giving everybody an octet and see how that does for us. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So we have drawn 14 electrons, so this is actually the, the correct structure. Now for HF, H has 1, fluorine has 7, so we have 8 dots. So we're going to go H, F. We're going to put an octet of electrons around the fluorine because we know hydrogen only wants two electrons. That's the maximum it can hold in its first orbital. Uh, but fluorine, you know, we can give that an octet. And if we do, that's the right answer. Okay, we have eight valence electrons shown, and we have eight to deal with, so that's the correct answer. NH3. Now, hydrogens always have to be on the outside. Always, always, always. Because if you want to... Uh, make a uh, more than one bond. If you want to be on the inside, you need to have more than one electron. And since hydrogen only has one electron, then it always has to be on the outside of the molecule. So nitrogen in the middle, hydrogen's around the outside. We give nitrogen an octet, and we have five for nitrogen plus one plus one plus one. So there really are eight electrons, eight dots, so this is the correct structure. Other simple molecules. Here we have carbon. And we have, uh, that has four, 
and each hydrogen has four. I mean, each of the four hydrogens have one, so that's four, so a total of eight. And we can see, well, here's carbon. Let's put the four hydrogens around it. And we give this an octet. And that's eight electrons. Can't see that one. And that's the right answer. NF3. Okay, nitrogen has five, and each of the fluorines has seven. So 21 plus 5, we're talking 26 electrons. So we're going to go fluorines. Now fluorines are on the outside. And we're going to give everybody an octet. And see where that puts us. So I usually try to give everybody an octet if I can. And then, then we go from there. So this is 2, 4, 6, 8. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So that is 26 electrons, so that is the right structure. Silicon tetrafluoride, so silicon in the middle. Okay, that has four, and we have four fluorines. So each fluorine has seven, that's 28. So that's going to be a total of 32 electrons. So I'm going to put the fluorines around the outside. And I'm going to give everybody an octet. And when I get done, I have eight around of this fluorine, 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 eight, 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 eight. I have 32 electrons, 32 dots shown, so that's the correct structure. Now, I have C2H6. Again, I'm going to put my carbons. And then around the outside, I'm going to put my hydrogens. Because again, hydrogens need to be on the outside because they can only make one bond. And if I put, I give a octet to my carbon and octet to my other carbon, then I count up. See, each carbon has four, so it's four plus four is eight, plus the six that I have on my hydrogens. So I have fourteen electrons, and I've drawn two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. I've drawn fourteen electrons. So again, that is the correct structure. So just giving anybody who wants an octet, an octet has automatically given me the correct structures. And notice that my hydrogens and fluorines usually go on the outside. Hydrogens always go on the outside. Now these are a couple of, of ones that are a little bit different. What happens here is magnesium only has two valence electrons. And then here's two for the hydrogen. So when we get done, we're going to have four dots. Lithium has one valence electron. Hydrogen has one. So when we're done, we're going to have two dots. Here I have 3 plus 3, I'm going to have 6 dots, and 3 plus 3, I'm going to have 6 dots. Now families 2, 3, and 4 on the periodic table. So we're talking about the beryllium family, uh, we're talking about the uh, boron family, and the carbon family. Uh, those families do not follow the, uh, what am I saying, that's wrong. Okay, uh, families 1, two and three, okay, so like the lithium family, carbon family is fine, that these families do not follow the octet rule. Families one, two, and three do not follow the octet rule. They don't need eight, they just need two, four, or six. So here's magnesium. Now magnesium has two. Each of the hydrogens come in with one. So this is the correct structure for magnesium hydride uh, for valence electrons shown all together. Lithium has one hydrogen, has one uh, valence electron, so does hydrogen, so it shares just like two hydrogens. Aluminum, we'll put the hydrogens on the outside. We'll give six electrons within those three. And same thing with boron. So it's a little bit odd because you say, well, you know, they don't have an octet, but that's fine. Families one, two, and three. Uh, don't do the octet rule. They don't follow the octet rule. And we know hydrogen doesn't follow the octet rule. Now, here we have some just plain old uh, molecules. So here we have two carbons. And we know the hydrogens have to go on the outside. So I'm going to make this kind of nice and symmetrical. I'm going to start by giving the carbons an octet. Now we should go back and count up. So each carbon has four elect valence electrons. And we have four hydrogens, they each have one, so that's 12 total. And I have drawn 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. I've drawn 14 electrons. 
So that means this is not the right answer. So now, let's go back and say, well, what's going to happen if I have my octet? That is what this atom would do, this molecule would do, if there were plenty of electrons. But we don't have that many electrons, so what we're going to do is say, well, here's a pair of electrons that only counts for this carbon, and here's a pair of electrons that only counts for this right-hand carbon. So if we were to get rid of those two, and put a pair of electrons in between, now that pair of electrons in between counts for both atoms. So this is my new structure, and I'm going to just kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm going to say carbon, double bond, carbon, put on a hydrogen, put on my hydrogen, put on my hydrogen, and put on my hydrogen. So this is the correct structure for this first one. I'm going to uh, clean this up and, and uh, write that in. So I have carbon, double bond, carbon, put on a hydrogen, put on a hydrogen, put on a hydrogen, put on a hydrogen. Now you can see that this does follow our octet rule because here all of those electrons count for that carbon and all of those electrons count for that carbon so the two carbons do have octets um, which is what we want. Now let's try C2F4. So let's work down here. So here's carbon, and here's another carbon. And on here we're going to add on our fluorines, because we know they go, like to go on the outside. Now if there are enough electrons, every one of these atoms would like to have an octet. That would be a valuable thing to do. So to do that, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, whoops, yeah, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38. That would take 38 electrons to give everybody an octet. Now, the problem is, how many do we have? We have 4 plus 4 for the two carbons, and we have 4 times 7, 28. So we have 28 plus 8, we have 36 electrons, but we would need 38 in order to give everybody an octet. So we're going to do what we did before. We're going to take away a pair, take away a pair, and we're going to make these guys share. So my little rhyme means take away a lone pair that only counts for this atom, take away a lone pair that only counts for that atom, and uh, go back and replace it with a shared pair of electrons that counts for both atoms. So we get ourselves down to 36 electrons, which is what we have. So our final picture there would be carbon, double bonded carbon, single bond fluorine, single bond fluorine, single bond fluorine, single bond fluorine. And just finish the octets. A little messy, but that's what the wood would work. Okay, carbon monoxide. Okay, let's try that. So we have carbon and we have oxygen. Now what can happen? We have uh, an octet for everybody, for both those atoms. Now that would take 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. Now what do we have? We have carbon has 4, oxygen has 6, so we really have 10 electrons to play with. So what's going to happen is we're going to take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share, and that'll get us down to 12. Then take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share, and that'll get us down to 10. So my final picture here, once so I get rid of those and those and those and those, my final picture is a triple bond. So let's clean that up. Carbon, triple bond, oxygen, and that leaves one lone pair on the carbon and the oxygen. So there we have 10 electrons. O2, same sort of situation. So here's oxygen and another oxygen. If everybody were to have an octet, that would take 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. Now if I had 14 electrons, this would be the right answer. But each oxygen has 6 valence electrons, so I do have a total of 12. That means I need to save a pair of electrons. So here we go. We're going to take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share. And we can see what we have then is we get rid of those, get rid of those that only count for the single electron, single atom and we put a pair in between that counts for both. So our cleaned up picture is oxygen, double bonded, 
oxygen we have two lone pairs on each of the oxygens so that's my little poem take away a pair take away a pair make these guys share so here we have CO2 so CO2 we have carbon okay two oxygens and we'll give everybody an octet so if we had enough electrons that's what we do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons that would require. But what have I got? I've got car 4 for carbon, 6 for oxygen, and 6 for oxygen. So that's uh, 4 and 6 is 10 plus 6, 16 electrons. Okay, but I've, I've been using, I'm drawing 20. So we're going to take away a pair. Take away a pair. Make these guys share. And then we're going to take away a pair take away a pair and make these guys share. So you can see what I'm going to end up with is a double bond between the carbon and the oxygen and a double bond between the other carbon and the oxygen and that will be my uh, uh, structure. So let's kind of clean that up. So here I have carbon in the middle double bonded to an oxygen, double bonded to an oxygen and on my oxygen I have two lone pairs and two more lone pairs, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 16 electrons, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Okay, C2H2, and I've kind of drawn the way of the arrangement, but we know that hydrogens have to go on the outside. I have each carbon has four, so four plus four plus one plus one, so that would be 10 electrons total. And I can see if I try to do carbon, and carbon, hydrogen, hydrogen, I start by giving everybody an octet. And that takes 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons. But I don't have 14, I have 10. Now you might notice back here, I had, oops, back here, I had that same exact situation where um, starting off I had 14 electrons. Okay, and I ended up getting 10. And so we're going to kind of just recycle that picture. We're going to see the same thing. So. If I take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share, that gets me down to 12. Take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share, that gets me down to 10 electrons that I have. So my final picture is carbon triple bonded. Let me clean that up. Carbon triple bonded to another carbon, single bond hydrogen, single bond hydrogen. Now nitrogen. Each nitrogen has five, so that gives me ten. And again, here I have the same situation. I have ten electrons, so not surprisingly, I'm going to get the same situation. If I give everybody an octet, that's going to give me fourteen electrons. Take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share. Take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share. And so my final thing here is nitrogen triple bonded to nitrogen. And there's nobody on those lone pairs. It's just two lone pairs out there on the outside. So this picture, this picture, and the picture we had before with the uh, carbon monoxide all have 10 electrons, and they all have very similar structures. Now here we have HCN that we saw on the very front page. Okay, here we have we'll draw an H, we we'll draw a C, we'll draw an N, and they happen to be in that order. We'll give everybody an octet. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. This sounds familiar. Now what do I really have? H has 1, carbon has 4, that's 5, nitrogen has 5. So here we have 10 electrons again. So it's not going to be a big surprise. We take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share. Take away a pair, take away a pair, make these guys share. And our final picture looks very similar. We have a triple bond. So these last three here all have 10 valence electrons and they all have very similar pictures. Now, what about an ion like cyanide? Okay, cyanide, it has four for the carbon, five for the nitrogen, and we add one more because of the negative charge. So that's four plus five plus one, 10 electrons. Carbon, nitrogen. Okay, give it an octet, that's 14. So I think we can probably see already we're going to have a triple bonded carbon, oops, it's a nitrogen, 
triple bonded carbon and nitrogen and that gives me two four six eight ten and this has a negative charge on this okay so this is my cyanide ion carbon nitrogen brackets and a negative charge now sulfate so we'll try sulfur in the middle we'll put an oxygen on each of the sides we'll give everybody an octet that's where we'll start now what have I got? I got two, four, they got eight around this oxygen eight around this, eight, eight, so I have four sets of eight so that's 32 electrons that I've drawn now what I have, I have sulfur which has six and I have four oxygens each have six so that would be 24 so all together that is 30 plus I have a negative two charge so all together I have 32 electrons so I've drawn 32 electrons and I have 32 electrons so this is the correct structure just as is so sulfur four oxygens everybody gets an octet It's a little messy, but that's the right answer. Okay, phosphate. We'll start with a P in the middle. Give it an octet. We'll put the four oxygens around the outside. Give it an octet. Give you those an octet. Now again, I have drawn 32 electrons. And what do I have? I have phosphorus with five. I have four oxygen, so that's 24. And I've got a charge of 3 minus, so that's 3. So that again is 32 electrons. So when I put my brackets in charge, that's the correct answer. Now chlorate. Okay, chlorine in the middle, three oxygens around. Give everybody an octet. Okay, so that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 25, 26, 26 electrons. And what do I have? I have 7 plus 3 times 6, which is 18, plus 1 because of the negative charge. And that is 26 electrons. So I've drawn the right structure. So I'll just draw it a little bit better. Everybody here gets an octet. So some of these polyatomic ions here seem very simple. All we have to do is draw in, give everybody an octet, and we've got the right answer. Now, carbonate. Carbonate, we'll put carbon in the middle, put oxygens around three sides, octets. Now we've seen this a couple times, we can see that that's going to be eight plus eight plus eight plus two so that is ooh boy, eight 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 is twenty four twenty five twenty six electrons now in this case here what do I have I have four for carbon plus I have uh, eighteen for my three oxygens plus I have two for my charge that's twenty four so I have drawn twenty six electrons but I only have twenty four so we have to go back to our old trick we'll say take away a pair take away a pair make these guys share and I've just made a double bond between my carbon and my oxygen now the issue here is that if I do that I have to say well why couldn't I have done that up why couldn't I have done that to the left and the answer is you really have to show all three of those to get the correct structure so now is a really good time for us to use lines instead of dots because we need to do some shortcuts so here we have oxygen double bonded with two lone pairs oxygen single bonded with three lone pairs oxygen single bonded with three lone pairs and I've lost my lone pair on my carbon and this has a two minus charge and we're say that is in resonance with a carbon double bonded up now when we do a lot of these we're going to notice wherever we put a single bond there is going to be three lone pairs where we put a double bond there's two lone pairs then we have a third structure where we get the carbon double bonded to the oxygen to the left and 
the correct answer really should show all three of these structures. Now it's going to be kind of hard to fit that in, but that's the way that is. Now, the students sometimes will ask me, well, it, aren't you just rotating the molecule? Aren't you just saying the double bond is to the right, then the double bond is up, double bond is to the left, can't we just rotate around? And we say, no, it's like, let's say that this oxygen here was Oliver oxygen, and Oliver oxygen, at one moment, we're kind of saying is a single bond, and another moment it's a double bond up here to Oliver, and another moment it's a single bond again up to Oliver. And so that, that bond keeps kind of changing uh, between single and double. In fact, uh, one-third of the time it's a double. So it's really kind of a 1.33 bond. We'll see that more when we do bond order. Um, what happens here, though, is that's not really what's happening. It's not really flashing back and forth. Uh, this model just has to show, you have to show where the electrons are, and it doesn't really show the real bonding. What's happening, there's a pair of electrons that spend their time full time between the oxygen and the carbon, and then there's another pair of electrons that kind of spends its time on all three of those. But we don't have any way to show that with these Lewis dot structures, so we just say it's resonance. All three of these structures uh, contribute to the bonding. So uh, if I did NO3, it turns out I can have a very similar sort of a picture because when I do this, I'm going to find out I need to make a double bond to one of my oxygens. So I'm going to end up with three resonance structures, and I'm not going to draw them in here, but that's what happens. SO2, if we try to do this one, we're still going to have S. We'll put the O's on the outside. Okay, we'll give everybody an octet. And I really need more room. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to stop for a second and make some room. Okay, I was trying to make some room, but that's not going to happen. So if we follow the same rules here, we start off with sulfur and try to give everybody an octet. We're going to find out we're going to end up making a double bond to one side and a single bond to the other side. And that's going to leave a lone pair on that sulfur. And there's going to be a second structure where I have a double bond to the left. So I'll have resonance in that case. Okay, the last one here, O3 is exactly the same as SO2 because again, here we have 6 plus 6 plus 6. I have 18 electrons. Same thing here because sulfur and oxygen are in the same family. So when I get done, I'm going to have two different structures. One with double bond to one side, single bond to the other. And to show the complete structure, I would have to show two resonance structures. Now these last ones here, the bottom row, are ones where <clears throat> we have more electrons than we really uh, need to make everybody an octet. So for SF6, we go S here, let's put the four fluorines around, and then we still have two fluorines, so I'm going to kind of put them here in the corners. So what that means is I have sulfur which has six, and each of the uh, electrons on the fluorine has seven, so 6 times 7 is 42, plus 6, I've got 48 total electrons. Now, it's going to take one electron just to connect the fluorine and the sulfur. Because I look like it. Here's sulfur, one of its valence electrons. Here's fluorine. We know that it has seven valence electrons. So it's going to take one electron just to connect that on. So it's going to take one electron to hook each of the fluorines and sulfur has six valence electrons, so those are its six valence electrons being used for the fluorines. And then each of these fluorines still has three, uh, six, three more lone pairs. So that gives me my entire structure right there. And I'll just try to copy it again over here. So sulfur, so I'm going to put a line for fluorine, and a line for fluorine, and a line for fluorine, and a line for fluorine. And then there's another one, I put it off to the right at an angle, to the left at an angle. And what we really know when we build these is that would be like top, bottom, left and right, and front and back, like around a box. And then for each one of these, there are six more electrons. So fluorine is using one of its electrons to make the bond. And then the other six are three lone pairs on each one. So that's the correct structure for that, that's 48 electrons. Okay, xenon, okay, xenon 
has eight electrons plus each of the four fluorines 